I've built various balancing robots in the past. These include two wheel balancing robots like my Sonic the Hedgehog robot and my one wheel balancing robot which uses an active two axis omni wheel to balance on a single point. These robots actively move in the direction they are falling in order to catch themselves and balance. I also experimented with gyroscopes which use a constantly spinning mass and the resulting gyroscopic precession to exert a force and balance. A physical spinning gyroscope will exert a perpendicular force when it's tilted in one axis. This means that if we actively drive the gyro in one axis, we can actively control the force in the perpendicular axis. This is called a control moment gyro and these have been used commercially to stabilise boats. Using an inertial measurement unit to measure the angle and a PID controller to control the active tilt allows us to balance the device on a single edge. And I made this work quite successfully with a two wheel inline balancing robot as well as the one wheel robot which balances like the two wheel balancing robot in the other axis. These machines had two gyroscopes spinning in opposite directions and being actively driven in opposite directions in order to cancel out any unwanted gyroscopic precession. The main issue though with using gyroscopes is that they can only exert force when they're being actively driven in their control axis. And so if they reach the end of their physical limit then the device can no longer balance. When I built my BB-8 robots, I made them be able to rotate on the spot. This was achieved by using a reaction wheel. This is a large mass that spins in either direction at varying velocity, but can also stay stationary when it isn't required to exert any force. I've seen various other balancing devices on YouTube that use reaction wheels to balance, but I've never tried to make one. So in this video, I'm going to do just that, starting with a simple test rig. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. The most important part of course is the reaction wheel itself which is a large 3D printed part and that's got a pulley printed into it so we can drive it from a motor. It's going to need more mass though so I've got lots of 8mm bolts which are attached all the way round and I've got two nuts on each one which are done up against each other so that basically they don't come undone and fly off. It's not going to spin as fast as the gyroscopes which did a few thousand RPM but we still need to make sure it's secure and there's no disasters. I haven't done any calculations but it looks like we've got a fair amount of mass. I'm driving this with a 90 kV motor which is an Eagle Power LA8308 and these are the same motors as in my Open Dog projects. There's a drive pulley on the top of that which is screwed on to the fixings all the way around. This gives us a 5 to 1 reduction which is the same as Open Dog version 2. I found if I take off the hex nuts where I normally mount the encoder, in fact there's an M8 thread in there which is very useful for mounting an encoder instead of making a 3D printed part to fit onto the hex nut. And that rotates of course with the pulley and that half of the motor. The motor has M4 screw holes tapped into it so we can just screw that onto a 3D printed plate which is going to make up the main mount and the main chassis for this test rig. The encoder is an 8192 CPR encoder and that's screwed onto another 3D print which fits into the hole in the back of the main chassis and I'll just tape that on to hold it in place so I can still take it off and get to the motor screws. The whole thing is mounted onto a handle so I can grab it and in fact it's going to go upright like so. We've got an axle made of a piece of M8 studding that goes through two 3D prints screwed onto the top there we put a washer on and then of course that's where the main reaction wheel is going to mount. There's a belt drive between the two pulleys and this is an HTD style belt which is pretty tough so I've got an extra brace here for the motor and that fits onto the base to hold that belt nice and tight. And of course there's another bearing in the end of the pulley there so we can really tension it and double brace that motor. So there's everything in place, of course we've got that pulley between the reaction wheel and the motor and the belt nice and tight. This is exactly the same setup as we had in Open Dog version 2 with exactly the same belt and the size of the pulleys which is a 5 to 1. So that should be pretty reliable and we shouldn't expect that belt to skip or slip at all. 
Each of the 12 joints of OpenDog version 2 is exactly the same drive with a 5 to 1 belt reduction, so you can check out that build series in my channel. I've put together some electronics to test this out, and that includes an O-Drive 3.6 brushless motor driver which I've wired one motor into and its encoder. And the whole thing is going to be powered from a 6S LiPo at around 24 to 25 volts, which is more than enough. I'm using an Arduino Mega and I've got a little control panel there with various switches on. So now we've got a motor enable switch that allows us to just turn that motor on and off and the velocity is currently controlled with a potentiometer so we can check if there's enough mass. So that goes pretty fast, it's a bit like a meat grinder and that's why the handle's on the back. I've also got an emergency stop switch which will actually reset the O-Drive in case it all goes wrong. So let's give that a test and see if there's enough mass, and it looks like there very much is to tip it completely over. If I move the reaction wheel in opposite directions we can see there's definitely a reaction and it's pretty hard to hold on to. Similarly if I just stop and start the motor with the motor enable switch it'll pretty much tip over, but what we'll probably do is reverse the direction to cause the maximum reaction to balance. I've made a wider yellow base so that there's a stop and I've also put a pivot point in the middle so we can test how it's going to balance. I've put it on a bit of rubber mat so it doesn't slip too much and if I power the motor up and manually control the wheel we can see that there's more than enough force to still tip it over. So that means we've got enough mass and we've got enough motor velocity to make it balance so now we just need a control system. But before we see how that's going to work, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, which is Hostinger. Firstly, I've put up a new website about all my balancing robots, which is hosted by Hostinger. It's called balancingrobots.tech, and you can check it out now to see pictures and videos of many of my previous projects. It's easy to set up a website hosting with Hostinger on their shared hosting using a simple guided process. Just select who you're creating the website for, what sort of website it is, and what your website implementation skill level is. You can then select what you want to be installed on the website, and you can also migrate an existing website or start from scratch. It's easy to set up a WordPress website by selecting one of the templates. Select your domain name and click on finish. It's as simple as just a few clicks to get your website up and running. The servers are extremely fast and have a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee, and they're also optimised for WordPress sites. Hostinger provide 24-7 chat support 365 days a year, a user-friendly control panel and free domain in SSL. There's also a 30-day money-back guarantee. So don't forget to check out balancingrobots.tech to see some of my projects, and if you want to host a website of your own, you can go to my special link, hostinger.com slash Bruton, and use my special coupon code Bruton to get up to 91% off all yearly plans. We need to know the angle of the device so we can make it actively balance around the zero point, so I've added an MPU6050 inertial measurement unit partnered with another Arduino that reads the data and sends it to the Mega over serial on a long wire. So now you can see as I tilt it that we can see that nice curve with zero roughly in the middle when it's upright. And at the moment I'm just driving the motor speed completely linearly from that data, so as I lean it either side the flywheel goes faster. And that basically kind of makes a difference, it's a bit harder to tip over but it doesn't make it balance. So we need a different characteristic with more acceleration. To achieve this I'm going to use a PID controller. There's a lot of examples and information out there about this and I've used the Arduino PID library in all my previous balancing robots. I get asked a lot of questions about tuning PID controllers so I thought I'd put some extra info in this video. The PID controller has three terms, P, I and D, which stand for proportional, integral and derivative. Proportional gain is simply how big the output is relative to the input, so if I set that value to 10 then I get a value of 10 at the output of the PID controller for every 1 degree the robot tips. In this case that will make the reaction wheel turn 10 revolutions per second because the O-Drive uses motor revolutions as its input. If I tip it 0.5 degrees then I'll get 5 revolutions per second and so on. Integral gain is the most important thing we need to make balancing robots work. Integral gain is the area under the graph. Because this area is basically a square function of the input of the PID controller, its output is a much faster changing value. 2 times 2 is 4, but 4 times 4 is 16, so the output value gets much much bigger as the input increases. 
There's a great video by Jack Monaco that you should check out, which not only explains integration, but also shows a mechanical integrator being built and used. This is based on a rotating disc with an omni wheel running on it, which reminds me a bit of my continuously variable transmission projects. Too much acceleration can cause the output to overshoot though, and this can cause oscillations in the eventual physical output as it constantly overshoots the balancing point. And that's where the derivative term is important. The derivative is a tangent of the curve of the graph at any point. Increasing this value essentially causes a sharper response. If the value is too high though, then we get vibrations in the physical output. So typical PID values for a balancing robot look like a much higher integral term and a much smaller derivative term with the proportional value somewhere in the middle. I tune these values by trial and error and it's a bit like focusing a camera with three lenses to get them all balanced depending on the physical characteristics of the device. With the PID value shown, it balances not too badly and mostly seems stable. It's very hard to get it to be perfectly balanced at exactly zero degrees though, and the reaction wheel can only exert force when it's accelerating or decelerating. This results in the wheel having to slowly increase velocity to balance a fraction of a degree off centre, and eventually it can't go any faster so the device can no longer balance. To fix this, I built a crude observation controller. This accumulates any velocity output values from the PID output on each loop of the code. I've divided this value right down so it doesn't grow too quick, and constrained it to plus minus one. This value is then taken away from the set point, which is the angle I want it to balance at. So now it constantly moves the balancing point the other way as the velocity increases too much. This makes it far more stable and predictable. So now even if I shove it quite hard and try and knock it off balance, you can see that the wheel accelerates away using those PID values, but it quickly settles and continues to do that oscillation between minus one and one degree. So it's pretty stable altogether, and it's probably one of the most stable balancing things that I've actually built. And of course this is totally actively balancing, if I turn off the motor enable then it won't stand up by itself at all. We could probably use a reaction wheel like this to balance a robot with two wheels, or anything with a single edge. One disadvantage of a reaction wheel is that while it's rotating, it will also have a gyroscopic effect, and gyroscopic precession will cause unwanted movement in a perpendicular axis if the device is tilted while the reaction wheel is rotating. This effect will also vary depending on the velocity of the reaction wheel, which of course constantly changes. Therefore, to make something like a one-wheel robot, we'd need at least two reaction wheels so that each can also stabilise the gyroscopic effect from the other wheel. I'm pretty happy of how well this works though, so building something like a cube that balances on one corner using three reaction wheels doesn't seem so hard. That was actually pretty easy to tune up, and I think that's probably because we've got quite a large mass and hardly anything for it to stabilise, which of course means it doesn't have to move as fast, or accelerate as fast at least, to actually go and balance it, or to exert a force in the other direction. So I'm pretty happy of how that's worked out. Probably going to do some more projects that use reaction wheels, probably with multiple reaction wheels, and I still really want to make a one-wheel balancing robot that works really well, so that's a potential option with two reaction wheels. So I'm going to publish all the CAD and code as usual, which is open source, and that'll be on my github and the links in the description to this video so if you'd like to support me through patreon or youtube channel membership then you can and those links are in the description as well and youtube channel members and patrons get access to all the videos up to a week early and also sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can be part of that discussion all right that's all for now